If you come into Tales from the Empire expecting stories of well-known Imperials, turn away now. That is not what you will find here. Instead, Tales from the Empire offers 10 stories that originally appeared in the Star Wars Adventure Journal, a magazine published by West End Games between 1994 and 1997. Most of the stories are about original characters, and the authors run the gambit from Star Wars regulars like Timothy Zahn, Kathy Tyres, and Michael A. Stackpole to unknown fan writers. So in reading Tales from the Empire, I don't think I ever read it before, and I think what was the big turnoff for me was that Boba Fett and Slave One are on the cover. I'm not a Boba Fett fan, so I probably saw that and went nope, and did not give it a chance, which is a pity because number one, Boba Fett does not appear in this book at all. Jodo cast his look-alike double sort of does, but it's complicated. We'll get into it. So I'm left wondering why, for a book called Tales from the Empire, we don't have stormtroopers or Imperial Star Destroyers or TIE Fighters or something like that on the cover. Just something besides a character who doesn't even appear here. So a brief summary. If you've never read an issue of the Star Wars Adventure Journal, which, fair enough, they're hard to find, they're definitely out of print, Tales from the Empire basically gives you a glimpse into what the fiction that that magazine offered was like. There's a mix of pro and fan writers, and you get to see a side of the galaxy far, far away that's sort of off the beaten path. And the end cap for the collection is a collaborative story in four parts written by Zahn and Stackpole that takes place before The Empire Strikes Back. So the collection kicks off with an introduction by the editor, who is also the editor of the Star Wars Adventure Journal, Peter Schweighofer. It's not necessary, it's over long, and I really wish that that page length could have gone to maybe another story or two from the journal, because as it stands we only get ten. First up of the stories is First Contact by Timothy Zahn, which is about Talon Card's first encounter with Mara Jade. I love that Card's dad hun joke thing goes back even before the Thrawn trilogy because here he and Tapper are using the pseudonyms Heart and Soul and their ship is Yuana Buyer. It was nice to see him interact with Mara Jade, and I also like seeing Tapper again, who we last saw in the Back to War, but it felt a little slight to me, like the story's basically here to kill Tapper off and for Card and Mara to meet. And I also found it a little strange that neither Card nor Tapper commented on the fact that her pseudonym, Selena Marness, is very, very similar to the name of one of Card's ex-employees, Melina Karnas. I think there's an extended version of this story in comic form, and maybe it deals with that there, but Card doesn't say anything like, really weird, her name is so close to that traitor woman that used to work for us. Next is Tinian on Trial by Kathy Tires. Interestingly enough, apparently Kathy Tires wrote the story about Tinian in Tales of the Bounty Hunters first, but since that book wasn't published until December 1996, this was the first time that readers saw her because this story came out in issue number four of the Star Wars Adventure Journal, which was published in November 1994. It's pretty much an origin story. We see where Tinian came from, what happened to her, why she hates the Empire, why she thinks her fiancé is dead, uh, but that's it. So it sets the stage for further adventures with Tinian, but I really wish that we had gotten maybe one or two of those further adventures, because as it stands, it's just set up for the other stories that Tyres was going to write about this character. Third up was The Final Exit by Patricia A. Jackson. 
I usually don't talk about writing style in these reviews in great detail because usually, at the very least, it's serviceable. The writing's not atrociously bad, there's maybe some quirks I don't like, but it's readable. Jackson's story, though, was very difficult for me to get through. The writing was overwritten and overwrought, and there were a lot of unnecessary descriptions and just straight-up abuse of adjectives. Barbara Hamblin for instance, is a Star Wars writer that I would describe as having a very purple prose, but it's still, for the most part, readable. Jackson's here was so purple and overwrought to the point that I really struggled to finish this story. I also found that there were a lot of jumps from viewpoint characters, and maybe this is the book being formatted wrong, but they were really jarring and they would just come in the middle of paragraphs. So sometimes it was like, wait a minute, whose head am I in? Who's talking? And finally, the main character, Brandle, is just he's just too much. He's just over the top. He's apparently an actor come Jedi Knight, come Imperial Inquisitor. And I think that he's a recurring character in her stories, but I wasn't interested in him at all, and I don't feel like I want to seek those stories out. So next, we had Missed Chance by Michael A. Stackpole. This was a story about Corrin right before Rogue Squadron. It's basically about the impetus that gets him to join the New Republic and try to get into Rogue Squadron. I liked it. It was fun. I just felt like Corrin played maybe too key of a role here. I like that his astromech unit, Whistler, was basically starting rebellion on the planet Garki, but the fact that Corrin was pretending to be the Moth's aide didn't work for me. How long had he been there and how long had he been pretending to be the aide? Some of the details were a little fuzzy for me. Then we had Retreat from Coruscant by Lori Burns, which was another original character, but it was a lot of fun. It was a mail courier who just happens to be on Coruscant when the Imperials attack during the Dark Empire comic. She sort of gets drawn against her will into a New Republic plan, so we get cameo appearances by General Bella Bliss and Colonel Bremen and Mara Jade, who are all characters created by Timothy Zahn. I just liked seeing someone for once who wasn't in the military, who wasn't on the side of the good guys or the bad guys, and really just a normal civilian caught up in this action scene. Then we had A Certain Point of View by Charlene Newcomb. For this story, Newcomb basically made a story to accompany the cover of one of the game guides that West End Games had put out. So this was something something maelstrom, and there's a red-haired lady and she's playing a game with two aliens. So Newcomb gives us that lady's story. Her name's Celia, she works on this ship, her like ex-boyfriend shows up and it turns out that the guy that she plays games with was giving stuff to the rebels and so he's killed and she decides she's going to join the rebels and that's it. This was just one of the stories where it made me wonder if this was a recurring character that we've seen before or we'll see again and whether this was the first story in that sequence. And so this was one where I felt like we got all the backstory we needed, but I almost wondered whether this was like a character that we'd see again, or whether this was just a one-off. Then we had Blaze of Glory by Tony Russo. This was about some mercenaries who are trying to rescue children from slavers, set, I guess, after the Thrawn trilogy, but the Imperial threat is like one we've never heard of before. And this was another instance where I wondered if this was a recurring theme in his stories that he had in the Adventure Journal, where basically in the point of view most of the time of the team medic, she's joined these mercenaries because she wants to find out what happened to her parents, and she doesn't find out what happened to her parents, but they rescue the children, so it's, it's okay. The action was exciting, but what I found with a lot of these stories solely populated by original characters was that I didn't really have a connection going into any of the characters, and by the end I still didn't feel like I'd really known them completely. And then we had Slaying Dragons by Angela Phillips. 
This was another one that didn't really work for me because the main character is a nine-year-old child. I'm sure that there were children involved in the rebellion. I mean, the Rogue One movie, Cassian says that he's been fighting this fight since he was six. But she displays technical skills that I rather doubt a nine-year-old would have. It sort of reminds me of how Anakin Solo was in the Corellian trilogy, that there's just this technical prowess that's really beyond what I think someone of that age would be capable of. And I also wasn't crazy about the ending, because the end is she's left her parents and joined the rebels. And while her parents weren't really supportive of the rebel cause, like, you're nine! You should stay with your parents! That's bad! Like, you're probably gonna die and I'm gonna feel really bad about this. <sighs> then we had, I don't know, maybe my favorite story in this collection, Do No Harm by Aaron Endum. I was sort of disappointed in googling to find that I think this is the only Star Wars story that Endum ever wrote. She's a pediatric doctor and she also teaches that at a medical hospital and this is her one foray into the Star Wars universe and it's pretty good. Our viewpoint character is Orin, a rebel doctor who's assigned to this extraction mission to extract a rebel operative who's been captured by Imperials and basically the whole story is her trying to reconcile her role in the mission with her medical training, specifically the axiom to do no harm. She's sent on this mission because they want to make sure that the operative who has a very bad health condition is ambulatory and they can get him moving. But she's also told if they don't think they can get him out, she's going to have to kill him. And later on, she faces the choice of, I have a blaster, I'm on this mission. To what extent do I need to use violence to ensure that me and everyone else on this mission survives. She really struggles with it in a realistic way, and at the end, she doesn't feel good about the action she had to take. There's a part of her that still feels that she could have done differently. And I like this one an awful lot. I think of all the stories here, this is the one that would stay with me the most just because it was so different and such a unique take. And then last, we had Side Trip, which was a four-part story written by Timothy Zahn and Michael A. Stackpole. Zahn wrote parts one and four, and Stackpole wrote parts two and three. It's basically an adventure sent before Empire Strikes Back. We have a group of traitors and rebels who are drawn into this plot by apparently Jodo Cast, the bounty hunter who's been aping Boba Fett for a while, but in reality it is Grand Admiral Thrawn. We also run into Hal Horn and Corrin Horn who are trying to take down the Black Sun criminal Zekka Thine. And in the end, we even get Darth Vader and Colonel Veers as well making appearances. For this one, I think I liked Stackpole sections better than Zahn. Not really for any writing style reason, I just liked the developments that happened in the middle of the story better than the tail ends of it. Our rebels are good, our traitors are good. Really, Corrin and Hal were the most interesting characters to me. The way that Corrin is so completely opposed to the rebellion at this point in time. And while he doesn't like how Corsac works with the Empire, he views it as like the lesser of two evils, that Corsac working with the Empire means that the Empire's sort of gonna let Corellia govern itself for the time being. Thrawn's okay. I found that this story, like later appearances of Thrawn, had him doing things and scheming schemes that just felt a bit much to me. He has a plan in place, but then he sort of has to alter it on the fly, but it just works out so well for him that I'm like, really? Really? It was nice to see, though, how Thine got sent to Kessel, and I also like getting to see Korn's interactions with his father, and it was nice seeing Vader having to accept Thrawn's help, but also being sort of not 100% cool with it either. So Tales from the Empire, compared to the 
previous three Tales collections doesn't have a unifying theme at all. Basically, I'm not even sure why it's called Tales from the Empire, other than just they thought that people would see Empire and Star Wars and go, I buy it. The stories are all over the place timeline-wise. Some are set during the original trilogy, some are set after Return of the Jedi, and since there's no unifying theme, it was a little disorienting sometimes starting a new story because with the original characters, it wasn't immediately clear when this was set and when this was happening, so I found it sometimes a little hard to get into them. I like the ones by all our Star Wars regulars. The Stackpole and Zahn ones sort of served as prequels to existing stories. So First Contact was like a prequel to the Thrawn trilogy, Miss Chance was a prequel to Rogue Squadron, and Side Trip is sort of like a prequel to Shadows of the Empire since it sets up Vader's feud with Prince Shizor at the end. The other stories are all over the place but there's just not that unifying theme that helps you nail down what they're about and when they're set. I also found that when you mix pro writers and fan writers, there's really variable quality here. On the whole, I thought a lot of the stories were really well written. Some of them just didn't work so well for me, and I'm not sure if that's because it was by a fan writer or just because I didn't click with the subject content. And actually, I thought Tales from the Empire is sort of the fan writer's dream. The idea that there was a officially sponsored Star Wars magazine that you could submit stories to, that it could be published in, and that down the road they could end up in an actual published book was probably really exciting to them. So, in short, Tales from the Empire offers a lot of glimpses into original characters by non-professional writers. Some of them are really, really good. I highly recommend Endem Story Do No Harm. Some of them weren't as good, but the good thing about a short story collection is that if one story doesn't work for you, just try another one. I only wish that it was easier to access more of the stories from the Star Wars Adventure Journal because some of them are clearly part one or a continuing story in a sequence, and I would really like to read some of those. Like, I'd really like to read more of Tyre's stories about Tinian if I can figure out how to get access to them. So next time I will be jumping back into the X-Wing books with Aaron Alston's entry into the series, Wraith Squadron.